Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. It is the 4th of November today. Uh, we're going to do an update on Bitcoin and we've got a very important update that I want to make. It's something I did alert the group to on Thursday uh, last week and I want to make you guys aware of it also. Um, so it's a slight adaptation to what I was analyzing in the chart in my last YouTube video. So it's an important update to make. Uh, as you can see within the title of the video, I've talked about us consolidating under this key horizontal level around 9300. So that is a major talking point of today's video. Clearly, we're consolidating at present. Whether that's accumulation or distribution is the main thing that we need to focus on right now. So this is essentially what we're going to cover in today's video. So if interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, so as I say, a very important update in today's video. Now, before we jump into that update, I do want to go through my long term count. So we're going to bring on the labels here that I've been using to look at the, the long time frame here. So you will know if you followed my channel previously that I'm looking at this 20K high as a major wave three top here and this price action that we're seeing following I'm anticipating it playing out as a large ascending triangle so the way I'm looking at it is this three wave move down here was our a wave I'm looking at the current price action that we're within being part of a b wave which has not finished so the b wave of the triangle the ascending triangle will finish up here and um, so far we're kind of halfway into that triangle that's the way i'm looking at it so i've actually got this as a three wave count up to here that's an a b c i explained this in a lot of detail in previous videos why i think this is an a b c count rather than an impulsive one two three and you'll see it across crypto it very much looks like a three wavish count throughout 2019. i won't go into that in too much detail here but i'm looking at it as corrective this is the correction of that correction up and I'm now expecting another move up. Essentially what I'm expecting in simple terms is a double zigzag. This being our first ABC zigzag, this is our correction, and I'm then expecting another ABC zigzag to the upside. Okay, so just to illustrate that ascending triangle a little better, we can stick the waves on. So this is how you can see it here with our A, b c d e before we then go progressing into our major wave five so this is essentially the larger time frame count that i'm leaning towards at present this is how i'm expecting price to play out um so so far so good everything's you know going according to plan at present now what we do need to address is i want to carry on from where i left off in my last video where i was really focusing on this downward price action where I was anticipating another move to the downside. So I have been scrutinizing the chart a lot since that video. And as I say, I gave an update to my uh, the group, the Discord group, um, saying that there's a very good chance that we have completed the correction with a WXY here. And the reason that I kind of swayed my analysis to that completion of this correction um, well, first of all, let me just explain what I was looking at prior to that in my last video, just to summarize. So I was basically saying that this was a W, an X, uh, a Y down to here. And then I was looking at the price action from here as being an expanded flat. That's an A, B, C, okay, to complete a second X wave. And then we'd see another wave down. Now, that hasn't been invalidated, and the, as I said, um, invalidation would only be when price gets above this 10.3k point. However, as I say, I've been analyzing the chart a lot, and I do think that, contrary to that count, we are seeing a completion of a WXY, which I'll, I'll explain the reason for that in a moment. But, yeah, as I say, the WX, WXY, X, sorry, Y, X, Z play out with a move coming down lower to perhaps fill that gap that very um, that gap that everyone's been talking about at 7100 could have got filled if we had another Z wave coming down okay and it was forming like a converging wedge like pattern um, 
so yeah that was the play out that i was looking at but obviously we saw tremendous volume come in if we just pull on the volume obviously we've seen a really big green candle to the upside huge amount of volume and i did show how i can't remember i think it was around four 14th of November 2014, there was an X wave completion which did occur on good volume also. However, the volume here certainly supersedes that volume back then uh, and relative to the, the volume of this whole correction, it is really substantial this volume. We can't just fob it off saying it's part of a correction. I mean, yes, there's the possibility this volume came in just because of the hysteria with a catalyst that um, uh, President Z, uh, Z made an announcement that could have created a lot of volume coming in. But to me, I think we have to consider this as substantial as being, price is basically being val validated by the volume here. It's substantial volume. So that's why I've scrutinized the chart a lot to see possible bullish count, which I'll go into in a moment. Um, so yeah, a couple of reasons that I was anticipating another move down was two important levels that didn't quite get tagged. So first of all, there was this level at 7236, and this was the 0 0.618 Fib level on the linear scale. So it was almost at meme status, the way it was going across social media, everyone talking about this 0.618 level. Uh, at around 7236 and you can see essentially what we can say here price got front run price wasn't allowed to tag that level where a lot of people would have had buy orders and it makes sense anyone with a, a lot of money to get in just prior to that to front run all the retail traders looking to get in at 7236 so as to give themselves more liquidity at the level that they were you know just prior to that level so it did make sense you know, if smart money was coming in to make it move just prior to that level. And another significant level was, as I mentioned earlier, that significant gap, which is at 7105. Again, that didn't get filled. So <clears throat> two key things that didn't quite get filled, but I'm going to explain why I don't think they need to get filled just yet. And the reason for that is, first of all, from a Fibonacci point of view the 0.618 didn't quite get tagged now you've got to allow for a little bit of discrepancy within the uh, charts you know the data isn't always perfect and i think it was only 50 dollars out here from hitting the line okay so that's one thing but more importantly okay on from a price point of view we didn't hit the 0.618 but if we just go let's go on the four hourly here and i want to look at um let's use fibs but from a time perspective, so fib time, so pulling it from our beginning here, taking it to our top, the thick dotted line here, this is our 0.618. So this duration here is for our move up, that's our ABC count that I've given it. And then this correction is a 0.618 to the T of that move up. So in terms of time, this was a 0.618 uh, fraction of this time here, from here here okay we're zooming in you can literally see it was to the point we're talking the same four hour candle so this is the point six one eight this is the bottom here this we can all appreciate this was the candle where price bottomed out okay absolutely perfect on the point six one eight fib time so when you see things line up so perfectly like that perfectly like that I find it hard to ignore I really do so I think basically we can say here that time has trumped price okay price didn't quite get hit but time did and that is why we've suddenly seen that shift okay so that's one thing that that can justify why we're not going to tag this 0.618 level just yet that's that 7236 okay so that's that one out of the way now the other one was the 7105 which didn't quite get filled why didn't it get filled now we all know that gaps do not always have to get filled, okay? But that said, there are different types of gaps and if you're not familiar with them, check out my wave, uh, my website, wave618.com, check out my free material and go into the lecture on candlesticks and gaps where I talk about the four different types of gaps. This gap here would be considered an area gap. Area gaps there's a very high probability that these gaps get filled. So it's breakaway gaps where they often don't get filled. 
uh, area gaps do tend to get filled. It's, a, it's generally a high probability move. But that said, doesn't have, we are technically within a huge consolidation. So I'm looking at this as an A, B, C, D, and E. And what, I, what I'm suggesting is the C wave, when it comes down, is going to fill that gap. Okay, so then everyone will be happy. Everyone will be able to sleep at night knowing that that gap has finally been filled. Yeah, so that's the way I'm looking at it. So I don't think short term it needs to get filled just yet. Okay. Um, all right, so other things that I want to take into consideration. I want to throw in a few pitchforks. You know, I'm a big fan of pitchforks also. So let's just take a quick look at... So let's bring on the pitchforks a moment. So not that one. So this is the, the major pitchfork that I was looking at for the A, B, and C. And you can see here, this is why I was a big fan of this pitchfork. So the pitchfork is drawn by using these three pivots. First pivot at the bottom, second pivot here after our clear impulsive move, and then the third pivot was at the end of this ascending triangle. So it's an A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, this was the end of our triangle. Because it was a triangular playout, that means it's you would have to label it as a B wave and not a wave two, because you shouldn't get triangles in wave two. And when you use these pivots, you get price respecting this pitchfork really, really nicely, which gives me further validation that this is what price is following, Th these three pivots, this pitchfork based on these three pivots. And you can see here, we test the median line a couple of times, consolidate, push onto the upper median line, consolidate, push onto the upper warning line, and then we pull back. And I did mention that because the ABC count has completed, we could break this pitchfork to the downside. It didn't have to hold. But within a double zigzag, you do generally get price channeling. Yeah, Price will follow a channel in a double zigzag or a triple zigzag. And so I'm not too surprised that we're finding overall, I'm quite happy to say that price is still adhering to this pitchfork. Yes, we saw maybe two daily closes outside of the pitchfork, but we violently went straight back into the pitchfork. Okay, we can see price nicely back within the pitchfork approaching the lower median line. Uh, on top of that, I want to just take a look at another chart. So that's the, the total market cap chart so let's just pull that up quickly so this is the total market cap chart so this includes bitcoin as well as all of crypto and i've drawn the same pitchfork here where we use our first pivot second pivot third pivot it's a modified shift pitchfork here obviously it's not as clean this pitchfork the the price does break out to the upside but you can see the lower warning line actually holds it quite nicely okay um, so I just wanted to illustrate that looking at crypto as a whole, it's actually still adhering to the lower warning line quite nicely, as opposed to on Bitcoin, where we did overshoot it to the downside and then come straight back within. Uh, but back to our Bitcoin chart. So that's that pitchfork. We can probably just take that one off now. So, so then let's take a look at the shorter time frame pitchforks. So I mentioned that when price came up to here, it hadn't actually broken any downtrend parameters. Technically, you can see we're still seeing lower highs here coming down. And actually, according to the trend lines based on the pitchfork, um, so you can see this pitchfork is the key one that I've been monitoring. So you can see here, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, this was holding price really nicely. Lower median line hit, upper median line hit, Again, a couple of tests of the lower median line, and then we're back up to the upper median line. So these med upper and lower median lines were holding price fantastically. When we see price get above cleanly, the nice daily close above the upper median line, that will be a really, really significant show of strength. Not only that, a daily close above this key horizontal level around 9300 will also be very significant. Here yeah, we can see how many times this level acted as good support, and so now it's only natural that it'll act as resistance, but it looks temporary. Since we've seen price shoot up, we've consolidated, and consolidation beneath resistance does suggest that we are going to see price break to the upside. So that's one pitchfork that I just wanted to mention. The other one is obviously this one, which looks at the, the Y wave coming down. So that's the first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. And you can see here, we're just testing the upper warning line 
of that pitchfork. Okay, so again, this is a significant pitchfork. Once we see a break to the upside, again, that's suggesting a shift in momentum to the bull in, in favor of the bulls. So it's so another key pitchfork I'm monitoring. And then this one is just on the shorter time frames. If we pull on the 15 minute, so as I'm doing this video, you can see we are seeing a bit of a show of strength above this upper warning line. Now it is a complex correction that it has been playing out here. Um, so this is our impulsive move up. And I've been following this correction. It looks like a converging type pattern at present. You can see that price is, uh, we've got one pivot here, pivot here, pivot here, pivot here, pivot here, and it's all within a converging pattern. So it could play out to be some kind of a triangle. We'll have to see how this candle progresses here. Let's just take a look at um, the volume for a moment, see what kind of, so we are seeing some relatively good volume come in. Okay, for it to rule out a triangle, basically we wanna see the volume come in higher than these spikes in volume here. That would be significant because obviously within a triangle, the volume should be trailing, getting smaller and smaller. So yeah, it looks like a pretty, it could turn out to be a significant move. We'll have to see the daily close on this, but um, yeah, essentially what I was expecting overall was probably around a 50% retracement within this move. But obviously with price shooting up very dramatically in this huge move here, it could mean a more shallow retracement. Obviously, we found nice support at the 0.382. I'm suggesting there's a possibility that we come down and test the 0.5 here. Yeah. But who knows? We may see price move to the upside here. Um, so as I say, this downward sloping uh, upper warning line here will be key. I want to see if we get a daily close above that. If we do, that's a good show of strength. And this a daily close above 9300 is a very good show of strength also. So I hope I've illustrated here the reasons why now I'm starting to think that rather than us seeing a, let's go on the higher time frame. Uh, let's just take that fib off. Let's hide that. Rather than it being a W, X, Y, X, Z, I'm now in favor of this being a completed correction to W, X, Y, and I've explained why these two levels haven't got hit. The Fib uh, price level didn't get hit because Fib time trumped it, and, the, and the, um, the gap didn't get filled because I'm expecting it to get filled later on when we see the C wave of the major ascending triangle. Um, at present, don't be surprised if we do end up seeing a shallow pullback only to the 0.382 of this move up because it was an aggressive move. We need to keep our eyes on this daily close here. That will be significant. Um, as I say, there is every chance we come down and eat into this consolidation, maybe take testing the, the highs of this level here, or maybe even a bit higher, maybe the wick of this, which is in keeping with the daily closes here. Um, <clears throat> so short term, we have to keep a close eye on the daily close, but the larger picture, I hope I've made it clear. I'm looking for a move to the upside. I, my probability wise, I do not think we're gonna come down, make another lower low. I think we're gonna start progressing higher now. And as I say, I'm looking for us to complete this um, major B wave of the ascending triangle up to here. So that's the play that I'm looking at. All right, guys, I hope you found value in today's content. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. And as always, feel free to put comments down below. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. All right, take care.